men. And uh, a couple of weeks ago, or maybe three or four now, Brother Junior Douglas was here on a Tuesday night and preached for us, and he gave me this track. And this track <coughs> says, This could be your last five minutes alive. I'm going to order some of these. But as you begin to read it and it begins to talk about your life, and it gets on down here and it says that your time, that the five minutes are almost up. I forgot how many it is, but I read one time how many people die a minute. And it's really astounding whenever you think about it. That the time in which you talk for 60 seconds, how many people have passed away. The sad thing about it is that most people today, not all, but I'm talking about the majority of people, think more about today and this life and what they're accomplishing and what they have and what they want and what they're going to get than they do on eternity. And in reality, eternity is the most important thing, not this life, but where you will spend eternity. Not how comfortable we are in this life, not the possessions that we have in this life, not the money that we attain in this life, not the fame that we have in this life, but where are we going to spend eternity? If this was the last five minutes of your life, where would you be when those five minutes were up? If today was your last day on earth, where would you be tomorrow? That is the most important. Not, not that you can take an IQ test and score real high. Not that you have the greatest knowledge of the history of the world and the history of our nation. Not that you have the greatest knowledge of stock markets and CDs and stocks and bonds. But where are you going to spend eternity? That is the most important question that anyone can ask you today. And we better know the answer. Amen? We talked last week about Lazarus and the rich man. We talked how that the rich man, the Bible said, fared sumptuously every day. Today he had riches. Today he had wealth. Today he had status in the public community. Tomorrow he would be in hell. The beggar, today he had nothing. Beggar's rags. The rich man fared sumptuously. He had the finest of garments. He had on a nice, he had on nice clothes every day. The beggar wore beggar clothes today. But tomorrow, he would be in Abraham's bosom. The difference between whether you're a wise man or whether you're a foolish man, whether you're a success or whether you're not a success, is not the things that you attain in this life, but are you prepared for the eternity to come? Because you can have, the Bible says, what does it profit a man? And we'll read that scripture in a minute. If he gains the whole world and loses his soul. So we talked about that rich man. We talked about another rich man. And we're going to start with him again this morning. A rich man that the Bible says had so much, and it was a parable, but it certainly was a truth that Jesus was trying to give to the people of that day and trying to give to us today as well. The Bible says there was a certain rich man and I'll give you that scripture it's in Luke the 12th chapter Luke the 12th chapter and Jesus and we spoke on this man last week but I wanted to touch on this before we move on to the next example of this Jesus speaking of another rich man says the ground of a certain rich man was that had brought forth plentifully. This is Luke 6, uh, 12 and 16. The ground of a certain rich man brought forth plentifully. And he thought within himself, saying, Now listen to this. Now you might think today that this man sure was cocky. He sure had a lot of confidence. But this is the way most people live. Most of us live as if we're going to live forever. Most of us live as if, well, there is death, but it's going to be a long time before it knocks on our door. When the reality is it can knock on our door today. We talk about, well, pray for so-and-so because he's got cancer. Pray for sister so-and-so. She's got a disease. They may outlive you. Amen? And he thought within himself. Listen to what this rich man thought. 
This example that Jesus has given. He thought within himself, what shall I do? Because I have no room where to bestow my fruit. So see, we, today we see that he is prosperous. So much so that he doesn't have enough room for all of the stuff that he needs to store. Today he had the world by the tail, Brother Tyler. Today he had big plans. Today he was a big wheel in the things of the community. Today he had no thoughts of eternity. And we know this because of the things that he said next. And he said, this will I do. I will pull down my barns and build, build greater. And there I will I bestow all of my fruits and all of my goods. And I will say to my soul, Soul, thou hast much goods laid up for many years. Listen to him. He's counting on tomorrow. He's counting on many years to come. Take thine ease, eat, drink, and be merry. Why? Because I've worked hard. This man, worked, this man may have worked hard like the rich man in the story of the rich man and Lazarus, the, the historical account of the rich man and Lazarus. That rich man may have worked hard to get what he got. It may not have been handed down to him from, from, from his daddy. It may have been something he worked hard to get. A lot of people today working hard 40, 50, some 60 hours a week. No time for God because they're too busy planning for today so they have no thoughts of tomorrow. And even if they do think of God and they think of tomorrow, they think they're like this man. They're assured that they'll have a tomorrow. They think, well, I'll get ready later. I'll get ready tomorrow. I'll make things right with God tomorrow. I'll do things different tomorrow. Once I have enough, then I'll have time for God. I've got news for you. Flesh never has enough. Amen? Rich people, what do they want? What will satisfy them? A little bit more than what they have. Amen? Man is never satisfied. The Bible teaches us that the hunger and the lust and the flesh of the eyes, the, the, the lust of the heart of man is never satisfied. And this man assumes, and this is an assumption that will damn your soul. If you think today that, well, I'll just let... My soul passed today. I'll just let I'll just let the, the most important things pass today. Today I'll take care of today and this life, and I'll worry about eternity tomorrow. Yeah, your eternity may start tomorrow. There are more people in hell today, I believe, that believed this lie than had believed all of the false religions. I believe that this has taken more people to hell than all of the false religions that we've ever seen in the history of our in the history of the world. The devil didn't have to get them to worship Allah. The devil didn't have to get them to worship Buddha. He didn't have to get them to worship Muhammad. The only thing he had to get them to do was put off to tomorrow what they should have done today until they had no tomorrows left. The most important thing for you today is not how much money you have in your bank account. Not how many cars you have in your garage. Not how many stories you have in your house. The most important thing today is are you ready to meet God should the next minute be your last? Are you ready to meet God should today be your last day on earth and tomorrow eternity begins? Because the truth of the matter is none of us are promised tomorrow. For that matter, none of us are promised our next breath. None of us are promised our next heartbeat. And the question remains today, are you ready to meet God? This man wasn't. Why? Why? Because he had all of this of this world on his mind and in his spirit. He was wrapped up, tangled up, tied all up in the things of the world. He said, I will lay up my goods. I will say to my soul, you have much goods for many years. Take thine ease, eat, drink, and be merry. But what God say in verse 20? But God said unto him, Thou fool. You see, this man was a fool. Why? Because he planned for this life, but not the next. Because he laid up treasures in this life, but not the next. Because he put so much importance on this life, and none on the next. Thou fool, this night thy soul shall be required of thee. Then whose shall those things be, which thou hast provided. 
so is he that layeth up treasure for himself and is not rich toward God. That's where people, many people, find themselves in this life today. Laying up treasures in this world, thinking more of today than they do of the fact that they may not have a tomorrow. We see this with the rich man that Lazarus laid at his gate. We see that with this rich man, this parable that Jesus speaks of this rich man. We will see this with another man that I want to talk to you about for a few minutes this morning. And the reason we see example after example of this is because one of the things that Jesus spoke of the most was money. Not because he was passing the plate and taking up an offering, but because he knew that the love of money was the root of all evil. Because he knew, he even said that it is easier for a camel to go through the eye of a needle than it is for a rich man to enter into the kingdom of God. Why? Because when you got the money, many, many times the money's got you. And where your treasure is, there will your heart be also. Amen? Henry David Thoreau said this, Many people live their life as if they could kill time without injuring eternity. Did you hear that? As if you could kill time without injuring eternity. A missed opportunity is a lost opportunity. A wasted opportunity is a lost opportunity. More times than not, you may never get another chance to do that thing again. We waste our time as if it will have no effect on eternity at all. John Tillotson said this, He who provides for this life but does not take care for eternity is wise for a moment but a fool forever. He who takes care of this life but neglects eternity is wise for a moment but a fool forever. The great missionary Jim Elliott, who on January 8, 1956, he and three of his comrades were attacked and killed in the jungles of the equator of Ecuador by the Acura Indians. This is one of the things he wrote in his diary before he left on his missionary journey. God, I pray Thee, Light these idle sticks of my life that I may burn for Thee. Consume my life, my God, for it is Thine. I seek not a long life, but a full one like You, Lord Jesus. He is no fool to give what He cannot keep in order to gain that which He can never lose. The Bible says in Matthew the 16th chapter, the 24th verse, Jesus said unto His disciples, If any man will come after Me, let him deny himself and take up his cross and follow Me. And whosoever, the Bible says, will save his life shall lose it. And whosoever will lose his life for My sake shall find it. In other words, whenever you put aside the desires of the flesh and the lust of the heart and the desires of, your, of, of man in this life, and you set your sights on things eternal, then you are assured of your eternity in heaven. But whenever we begin to get so caught up in the things of life that we neglect the most important thing of all, that's whenever our soul hangs in the balance. That's whenever we stand. The dangerous point in your life is today. If you do not know that if you died today, where you would be tomorrow? That's the most important question. Today is where will you spend tomorrow? Not the wealth you have today. These men had wealth. The rich man that fared sumptuously had wealth today. Tomorrow he'd be in hell. I got news for you. 2,000 years after Jesus stood on the sandy shores of Galilee and told that story, that rich man's still in hell today. His riches still does not amount to anything. You won't stand before God and bargain with Him. 
You will give nothing. Brother David sings that song. What will you give in exchange for your soul? You will not stand before the, maker, the Almighty God, the Maker of man, and bargain with Him and try to pay your way out of hell. It won't work. You will stand there without your riches. You will stand there without your status quo in this life. You will stand there without your position that you have. When this rich man stands before the judgment seat of Christ, this rich man, when he stands at the great white throne judgment, his riches will not be there with him. The clothes that he fared sumptuously each day in will not be there with him. He will stand there stripped of everything. When we stand before God, we will stand there stripped of everything in this life except what we did for Him. Except our robe that is washed in the blood of the Lamb. Except the fact that we made sure that we put our faith in Jesus Christ and His finished work today so that we can be assured of that if this is our last day and if our eternity begins tomorrow, we will spend eternity in heaven. We look at another man today in Mark the 10th chapter. Mark the 10th chapter beginning of the 17th verse who had the same mindset. He was a little more religious. And the sad matter of the fact is that people think today as long as they're religious they're okay and that ain't true. Amen? As long as you're not at the, the boot scooting joint on Saturday night, as long as you're not playing the lottery, as long as you're not smoking, boozing it up, as long as you're not cussing every breath, you're okay. This man that comes to Jesus here in Mark the 10th chapter, he was religious. He was following some of the Ten Commandments. Wasn't following all of them. He was leaving the most important thing undone. The Bible says in the 17th chapter of the book of Mark, the 10th chapter, the 17th verse of the, of the book of Mark, 10th chapter. And when he was gone forth into the way, there came one running and kneeled to him and asked him, Good Master, what shall I do that I may inherit eternal life? Now listen to this. This is a picture of the lust and the greed of man trumping his desire for God. And Jesus said unto him, Why callest thou me good? There is none good but one, and that is God. Thou knowest the commandments. Do not commit adultery. Do not kill. Do not steal. Do not bear false witness. Defraud not. Honor thy father and mother. And he answered and said unto him, Master, all these have I kept, have I observed from my youth. So here we find a man. He's a good man. He's observed these things from his youth. He was raised right by someone, by his parents. My mom or daddy, somebody raised him right. He said, I've observed these things. I live a good life. And the Bible says, Then Jesus beholding him, loved him, and said unto him, One thing thou lackest. Now listen to this. Go thy way, sell whatsoever thou hast, and give to the poor. And thou shalt have treasure in heaven. And come and take up the cross and follow me. Now this man that had lived a good life, this man that told Jesus, he said, I observe these commandments that you speak of. Jesus said, go and do this. Sell everything you've got. Take up your cross and follow me. The Bible says that this man, in verse 22, he was sad at that saying and went away grieved. Why? For he had great possessions. If today ended and tomorrow you stood before God, what would really matter? The riches that this young man had, that he had put so much stock in, so much affection, he had put so much affection upon, what would really matter when he stood before God? The condition of his heart is what would matter. And we see this, his heart tells on him, he said, I want to go to heaven. What I have to do? You have to forsake the things of the world. You have to think more about tomorrow than you do today. You have to think more about eternity than you do this life. 
I know today you get so caught up and so wrapped up in the things of your life and your job and your home and your family and all of that that many times you find yourself not thinking as much about eternity as you should. But all of us should make sure. And I know we can't sit down somewhere and just, oh, well, i got to worry about eternity. That's what I'm talking about. That's not what I'm talking about. I'm talking about making sure today that we are ready should tomorrow our eternity begin. Make sure that we're ready today if tonight they gather around our casket at musters and say nice things about us. What a great person we were. The great things that we accomplished. See, none of that stuff's going to matter when you stand before God. You could have character witnesses at the judgment and it would do you no good. They could come and say, Brother Sleece was a great guy. He was kind. He helped me out. He was a great giver. All that stuff's great, but none of that matters. If Brother Sleece is not washed in the blood of the Lamb and stands there in the righteous robe that was provided to us by the cross of Calvary and what Jesus did there. The most important thing that is to make sure our faith is in Jesus Christ and that we are trusting Him with our eternity. And not that we're so wrapped up in this world and making money and getting ahead and getting the next promotion and doing all these things and leaving our spiritual man to die and starve to death. To put that off and we'll take care of that later while we die spiritually. While we dry up spiritually until finally one day there are no more tomorrows for you to look forward to. There are no more laters for you to make things right. Eternity has came and you were not ready. This man had kept the commandments. He was a good man. He had a lot of money. He was an astute businessman, apparently. Or he had came into an inheritance of wealth. Either way, when he found out that he couldn't hold to the things of the world and hold to the things of God, he went away grieved because he had great possessions. It's nothing today if you go to a beggar and say, well, you're going to have to forsake this stuff. And follow me. But when you go to somebody that's got stuff, and you tell them you got to give up your stuff, and it's not so much because they had the stuff. We see here, and I know I use it sometimes as an example, and this may sound just like a catchy thing to say, but the stuff had this man. It wasn't that this man had money. Money had this man. Had it not, he would have been able to say, yes, Lord, I'll do it. But he didn't. He went away grieved, and the Bible never mentions this man again. He went away grieved because Jesus told him. And you might sit back today and you might look at the rich man there in the story of Lazarus. You might look at the rich man that was tearing down his barns and building bigger. You might look at this rich young ruler and you might think, wow, he was a success. No, he was a failure. You're a failure today. If you die and leave this life, and leave the most important thing that you should have taken care of undone. It doesn't matter if you was on Forbes' top 10 most successful men in America. You were a failure because you left the most important thing undone. There's nothing today more important than making sure your heart and your soul is right with God. Nothing. Look what a success they were, really. The Bible says in Mark, the 8th chapter, the 36th verse, For what shall it profit a man if he shall gain the whole world and lose his own soul? Or what shall a man give in exchange for his soul? When you stand before God, stripped of all of your riches and all of your statue in this life, what will you give in exchange for your soul? Jesus would teach in... Matthew 6 and 19, Lay not up for yourselves treasures upon earth, where moth and, and rust doth corrupt, where thieves can break in and break through and steal. But lay up for yourselves treasures in heaven, where neither moth nor rust doth corrupt, and where thieves do not break through nor steal. For where your treasury is, there will your heart be also. You see, that was the problem with the rich man with Lazarus. That was the problem with the rich man who was going to build bigger. That was the problem with the rich young ruler. 
That's the problem with many people today. Where their treasury is there, will their heart be also. And their treasure, their heart is not set on things of eternity, but on things in a temporal world that will soon fade away. The Bible says in Galatians 6 and 7, and we quote this scripture a lot, and I'm getting ready to close. Be not deceived, God is not mocked, for whatsoever a man soweth, that shall he also reap. For he that soweth to, the, to his flesh of the flesh, for whatsoever a man soweth, that shall he also reap. Then it says, For he that soweth to the flesh shall of the flesh reap corruption. Now listen to that. Whatsoever a man soweth, that shall he also reap. If you sow to the flesh, you will of the flesh reap corruption. But he that soweth to the Spirit shall of the Spirit reap life everlasting. Let us not be weary in well-doing, for in due season we shall reap if we faint not. In other words, if all you do is sow to the things of the flesh, you will reap of the things of the flesh. If all that you do in this life is sow to the things of this carnal world and this temporal existence, that's exactly where your reward's going to be in this life. But if you'll sow to the things of the Spirit... You see, the most important investment you can make today is not to get to the stock market and put your money into the Walmart stock. To put your money into Ford stock or Chevrolet stock or any of the other stocks that are on the market. The most important investment that you can make today is in the kingdom of God and the work of God. Because if you sow to the flesh, you will reap of the flesh corruption. But if we sow to the Spirit... If we live this life making sure that our eternity is sure in Him. Making sure that we are ready should this minute be our last minute. Then we will of the Spirit reap everlasting life. If we spend our life on this earth making sure. Now we all have to live. We all have to occupy till He comes. People have to work. People have to make a living. There's a big difference in doing that, knowing that your heart's right with God, knowing that you haven't left the most important thing, and knowing that if it would be your last five minutes on earth, that your eternity is secure in Him. That's the, you're a fool today. I don't care if you're sitting in your mansion on the hill and you're listening to this over the radio and you've got plenty of money. Don't have need of anything. You're a fool if your heart is not right with God. If you leave this world today not ready to go into eternity, you have wasted your life and been foolish with what God has given you. God has given us this opportunity to make sure that our heart is right. To make sure that we live for Him. To make sure that we make things right. That we are washed in the blood of the Lamb. That we have been reconciled to Him through His death at the cross. And if we miss this, listen, if you miss this, you've missed it all. You can go to church and sit on the pew every Sunday for all of your life. But if you miss this, you missed it all. It's not going to be, you know how in Sunday school you used to get a gold star for your attendance? And if you was there for all these Sundays in a row, this is the way it was when I was a kid. If you were there for all these Sundays in a row, you got a dollar or a candy bar. God's not going to look on His books when you stand before the judgment seat of God and see how many stars of attendance you had. And then if you've had enough of them, you're going to get eternal life. No, eternal life only comes when we've placed our faith and our trust, not in this world, not in riches, but in Jesus Christ and what He did on the cross of Calvary. Don't be called a fool today like this man that God said, Thou fool, this night thy soul shall be required of thee. Don't waste the time that you have here in this life to get ready for eternity. For as James said, life is a vapor. It appeareth for a little while and then vanisheth away. Amen. Vanishes away. I was going to talk to you this morning about the two male factors that hung beside of Jesus. Both of them given the same opportunity. One on the right hand, the Bible says, the other on the left. One of them rails against him and accuses him and says, if you're Christ, if you're God, get yourself down from here and us too. And the other one turns to him with a repentant heart and says, Lord, remember me when you come into your kingdom. Both men with the same opportunity. Both men knowing 
That for all intents and purposes, today was it for them, tomorrow eternity begins. We find one wasting his last breath. We find one wasting his last opportunity. We find another making good of the time that he had left. Well, he had lived a wasteful life or he wouldn't be hanging there on the cross unless he was put there falsely accused, which is possible. But he himself said that we deserve what we're getting, so we know that wasn't the case. Many people were crucified, I'm sure, by mistake or by false accusations. That's how Jesus got there. Amen. But one of them says, you know, if you're God, bring us down. Get yourself down from here. Deliver yourself. The other one says, Lord, remember me when you come into your kingdom. One of them wastes his last breath. I'd hate today to think you wasted your last breath cursing someone out. I'd hate to think today that you wasted your last breath defying God, angry at God, denouncing Him. Today, if you have breath in your body, you have an opportunity to accept. These two men both had an opportunity. You will not be able to stand before God and say, well, I just didn't have the opportunity that others did. Sure you did. He is no respecter of persons. He says, whosoever will, let him come and drink of the water of life freely. He said he died for whosoever will believe on him shall not perish. You have the same opportunity as everyone else today to call upon the name of Jesus. Don't be foolish and waste what time you have in this life. I want to close with this. There was a king who had all the world could afford. The thing he loved most, however, was to laugh. Once while being entertained, a gesture came along wishing to join the festival of activities and also wishing to perform for the king. His opportunity came and he put on the best performance of all the others and he made the king laugh harder than all the others. Once the festivities were over, the king wanted to hire this gesture to be his very own personal gesture, to make him laugh when he needed to be made to laugh, when he felt bad, when he wanted to be made to laugh. He wanted to be able to call on this jester. Once hired, the king in humor handed the jester a small stick and he said, you are the most foolish man I have ever seen. You're the most foolish man alive. When you find someone that is more foolish than you, give this stick to them. After many years, the king was about to pass away and he lay sick on his deathbed ready to go at any moment. And he called for his gesture because he wanted to laugh one more time. Bring the fool in here so I can laugh one more time. When the gesture came into the room and he began to speak with the king, he asked the king, he said, King, where are you going? The king responded on a far journey. The gesture asked him again, and how do you plan to get there? The king said, I don't know. Then the gesture pulled the stick from his back pocket and he handed it to the king. And the king was stunned and asked why he had given him the stick. And the gesture replied, King, today I have found a more foolish man than I. For you see, I only made light of the things of this life you have made light the things of eternity. <clears throat> the wisest man as far as in the world's eyes go will stand in the day of judgment a fool if he wasted his life on this earth and did not prepare himself for eternity. It would behoove every one of us to make sure whether you're listening by way of radio, whether you're watching the video, CD, or cassette, or whether you're here this morning, it would behoove us all to make sure that we know that we are ready for eternity. The Bible says the fool has said in his heart that there is no God. Many people, they have not said it with their mouth, but their actions speak louder than their words when you have no thought of eternity, when you put no thought whatsoever in where you will spend eternity and you live just for today, you in essence have 
said in your heart, there is no God. And you're a fool because of that. Because one day you will, I will, we will all stand before an almighty God. And the most important thing will not be how many credit cards you had, how much money you had in the bank, how great the banker thought you was. The most important thing will be did you take care of what you needed to take care of to make sure that your eternity was secure in Him? Did you put your faith in riches or did you put your faith in Jesus? Did you put your faith in the things of the world or did you put your faith in Jesus? Did you put your faith in your own ability or did you put your faith in Jesus? Did you put your faith in your own works or did you put your faith in Jesus? Anything that you put your faith in today beside, other than Jesus is enmity with God. It's God's enemy. Because there's only one object of faith today that, is that will bring you justification and sanctification in God's sight. And that is the blood of the Lamb. The finished work of Jesus Christ. Don't, whatever you do, don't just assume that you have tomorrow to make things right. Make things right today. Because this may be the last five minutes of your life. Since I preached that sermon last Sunday, we'll bring it down a little closer than that. Since I started preaching this sermon this morning, Countless people have passed from this life to the other. And the most important thing is not the accolades that people will stand around their coffin and bestow upon this one that has passed on. The most important thing is what will happen when they stand before God. If tomorrow begins your eternity, where will you spend that eternity? Someone else this morning have something before we go.